Hey guys, and welcome back to the show. I'm so excited to spend this time with you and dive into my birth story with you today. But before we get there, I hope you enjoyed last week's episode with the incredible Andrea Valet. If you didn't hear it, we dropped truth bombs left and right. It was the most incredible conversation, soul-filling conversation. We talked about the universe, our energy, relationships, the difference between holy and sacred relationships. It was amazing. And all of your comments on social have been incredible to see all of your takeaways and where you've been listening. Thank you so much for your feedback and sharing the show. It truly is how we build a community here because of you. Today's episode is all about reliving my birth experience. My son just had his first birthday and I got so emotional seeing all of our friends and family come together for his first birthday. And as my husband and I were putting the last, you know, final touches together for the party, I just looked at him before the chaos and I said, thank you for making me a mom. Had it not been for the love that we have and, and how we met and us conceiving and, and choosing this life together and wanting a family, we wouldn't be here today. And I find that so often we just go through life, we're running, we're running to the next thing and the next thing. And we just, we, we forget what it's all about, why it even matters in the first place. And so I took that moment in time to look at him in the eyes and say, thank you. It is because of us that we are here right now and about to celebrate our son's first birthday. And so I have never shared my birth story publicly. I really dropped in to what it was to be pregnant and to know that I am about to give birth in nine or 10 months. It's actually 10 months. They lied to you. 40 weeks is 10 months. Whoever says nine, that means they delivered at 36 weeks. Otherwise, it's 10 months. <laughs> um, and right away, I knew who my community was going to be. And that's the first most important thing about when you're having a baby. Who are your people? Who is your tribe? And I never understood that to its fullest capacity until I became pregnant and a mom. That your tribe comes into play at, at this time. Like, this is where it counts, you know? And so one of our friends in our community, she happened to be a doula and she knew before I even told her that I was pregnant. It was like, she just had this intuitiveness about her and knew, you know, we sat down for dinner. She was one of the first couples we were going to tell and she looked at me, she nodded her head. She goes, I know. <laughs> and I just looked at her and I said, yep, it's time. So where do I start? Every doula is so different and unique in how they express their gifts and their talents to the world and what they educate you on and the support they give and the knowledge and the resources. But I have to tell you, mine was incredible. It was nothing about the external experience as it much was about dropping in. And that was what I practiced my entire pregnancy was just dropping in and being very in, in tune with what's taking place. So dropping in and becoming very in tune with that, with my mindset, what narratives are playing out in my mind? What is my body feeling like as far as exercise today and movement? And of course, what does my soul need to be fulfilled? And how am I going to connect with my child? This was the cycle that I had started very early on. And it all played into the type of birth that I wanted as well. And so I knew off the bat that I wanted a natural, unmedicated labor. My husband and I both agreed that we would be in the hospital. For me, it became about, okay, now that I know what I want, how do I train myself to get there. So when I show up on that day, I've done all the work, you know, all the workouts, if you will, leading up to the marathon. So I, I have the endurance to withstand the marathon. I know what it's going to take to complete the marathon. I'm not going to just show up and say, okay, I'm here guys. Let's run this marathon. <laughs> I am the type of person that I like to be over prepared. Um, I will prepare, prepare, plan, plan, do all the things so that I can feel secure. So that when I show up on that day, I know all the things that can go wrong and all the things that can go right. So I know what to do when, when things happen. And that's just how I like to show up. So 
I did all of the things. I was drinking the gallon of water a day. I was taking all of my supplements and my electrolytes and feeding my body what it wanted. During labor, I'll never forget that what was most important to me was the mindset to drop in. And that was something my doula kept reminding me. It is all about surrender. You know, your son is not going to come by himself. It is a team effort. And I kept reminding myself of that, that I have a, I have a role in this. I'm co-creating this experience with him. So what kind of experience do I want? And what kind of, you know, groundwork, what kind of foundation am I going to give him to come through this world? If you show up in labor and you're all full of resistance, it's too much for you. You're not actually giving your child the best you know, foundation for them to come through because they're coming either way. The process was, was made perfectly. You don't have to tell your body how to birth or tell your baby how to come out or tell your body how to make the baby. It's doing it with or without your consent. So the only part of consent that we have is to allow or restrict what is happening. And so by me understanding what was going to happen, it allowed me to rest assured it will be okay. I remember my husband asking me, so are you like nervous to have a baby? Like, are you nervous to birth the baby is really what he asked. And I looked at him and I thought, no, I'm not, I'm not nervous. I'm excited. And he was like, really? Oh, okay. You're excited. I said, I am like, I'm fascinated. The fact that I don't have to tell my body what to do. I just have to show up in the right mindset, do all, you know, my preparations beforehand so I don't freak out. But no, I'm not nervous. I'm excited. And that mindset really served me well. And I leveraged that mentality for a lot of things in my life because you get to choose if you're going to be stressed, if you're going to be nervous, if you're going to be fearful, if you're going to be excited. And if I'm going to go through life, I'd rather be excited no matter what it is that I'm experiencing. Sure, it will be stressful. Sure, those other emotions and things will be playing out. But how I choose to move through that, I choose to be excited. So it helps me get through the things a little bit easier. I was also very cognizant that if I went past my due date, I was going to be induced, you know, let's say after a week or so. And I was really nervous about that because I wanted very little to no intervention. And upon choosing my doctor, we had this conversation from the get-go of what I wanted, the kind of pregnancy I'm, I'm looking to have, and the support from my doctors, and understanding how this particular doctor shows up in labor and how much intervention they actually bring to the table. And my doula did help me with this and, and being able to formulate questions and really kind of like interview your doctor. What do they do in this scenario or that scenario? You know, and really speaking through all those things so that way you can be on the same page. I went with a midwife nurse practitioner and we were both on the same page that I wanted a maternal led pregnancy and labor delivery. What that means is you as the mother know exactly what to do without anyone's opinion. If you tune into yourself, you know what your baby needs. You know if you need to be checked or not. You know if you are ready to push or if you need a little bit of a break, you know if you need water. Most of the time, we put all of our power and authority into someone else's hands thinking they know what's better for us. When in, in actuality, you have that inside of you, but you're just afraid and you think that you, you don't know, but you do. So we made that agreement. And even in the moments where I was seeking the external guidance. She kind of looked at me and said, well, what do you feel like? And she put it back on me. Even my doula did the same exact thing where she looked at me and she's helped countless, okay, hundreds if not thousands of women go through labor. She has three kids of her own. She knows a lot and has seen this many times before me, but yet she chose to put it back on me because as a mother who's igniting that power within, you know, and this is the time to harness that, to tune into that. The easiest thing to do is ask somebody else, but the harder thing to do is for that person to say, you got this. That was a lot of the framework going into my labor experience, knowing that I had that support as well for my spouse. So if you can tell, this is a lot of prep work behind my natural unmedicated labor experience. We take for granted having these hard conversations with ourselves and with those closest to us that are going to be part of this experience, the internal narrative 
was constant surrender. What is my job in labor? What am I supposed to be doing and focusing on and breathing? I wanted to know it all. I'm going to turn the new leave from my job two weeks before my due date, thinking he would come early. I, he came five days late. So I had two weeks and five days of just continuing to nest in the house, prepare, get things ready, took, did all of my doctor's appointments, got the nails done, the hair done, did lunch with my friends, did the prenatal yoga. And now I'm just waiting at this point. I said, okay, I've done all the things. I am ready for you whenever you're ready to come. Like one of those evenings I had vision, a birth vision board together. And it was so special because just the act of doing that really brought all these pieces of the puzzle together from my entire pregnancy of things that I was absorbing and learning and um, my mantras and my meditations and my visualizations, all of those things I put together on this board and I had a strategy. One side was the mind, understanding the stages of labor. And the other side was all about the heart dropping in, being intuitive and connected. And it was perfect and so beautiful because I was able to pull all of that information when I needed it the most and help me take all my scatteredness and bring it all together on one page. So I am past my due date now. It could be any, any day, any time. For those of you that are mothers, you know exactly what I'm talking about. I was going on walks in the morning with my friends my neighbors would look at me and say, you're still pregnant. And I looked up, I'm still pregnant, but I wasn't even worried. I had no stress. I didn't feel pressure. I knew he was healthy. I knew he was fine. Everything was good. It's just a matter of time. The next day goes by and the next day goes by. I, mean, I, I just kept trying to think of things to do. Honestly, I didn't have anything going on. So I wrote him a letter and we were finishing up his nursery. This was the room that I had told my husband that we were pregnant in. And now a year later, here we are finishing up the nursery. He's about to arrive. I'm writing all of these stories down. And I don't know when I'm going to give this letter to him. Maybe on his wedding day or maybe the day he becomes a father. I don't know. When, when would a man actually appreciate something like that? I finish the letter, put it away. You know, the next day comes and now on, uh, 40 weeks and five days past, I woke up that day. We had some workers in the house doing a few things. So it was kind of noisy and loud. At some point I went outside and relaxed in the pool. There's like a little trickling fountain. The water comes down and that noise just relaxed me to sleep. And in a very meditative state as I'm floating in the water with my big belly, thinking of him, he's moving a bit, you know, what is our birth story going to be? Um, what will he look like? Just in this dream state. And all of a sudden I get woken up by some thunder. No surprise there. We live in Florida. So I get up out of the water and I go, wow, I'm just so relaxed. And then we work out clothes on, go to the gym. I walk on the Stairmaster, do my Stairmaster for about 20 minutes. And then we come home, have some dinner, put a bunch of cayenne pepper. I love spicy. All of a sudden, at around 11 o'clock at night, I feel this intense, like super intense throbbing sensation as if my muscles are tightening because I I just did this like crazy rigorous workout, which I didn't. And I... My husband was like massaging it for me. It went away. About 30 minutes later, I came back. I'm like, that's so strange. Didn't even think it was a contraction, okay? I just thought it was strange. So I called up my doula. It's around midnight at this point. And she goes, well, what do you think is going to happen? Like, you're five days past your date. Of course, you're going to feel these nicks, snacks, and pains. Like, you know, try to go to sleep, get some rest, and call me in the morning. Off the phone, I try to go to sleep, get some rest. My body just keeps waking me up. Finally, after the five times I've gotten up to go back and forth to the restroom, right? As we do at that point in our pregnancy, around 4.30 in the morning, I get up and I say, that's it. I can't, I can't lay here anymore. I'm in too much pain. I cannot get comfortable. That's it. I have to stand. I need to sway. My husband wakes up. He goes, me as our birth 
prep course taught us, you know, start timing the contractions. And then my doctor had said, when it's part, call the doctor, go to the hospital. You guys, he timed me. I was two minutes apart, half the amount of time. And we both looked at each other and we were like, oh my gosh, oh my God, we're having a, like it's happening. We're having the baby. <laughs> And so he finishes putting you know, hospital back in the car. He puts the car seat in the car. Dog, okay. Contractions start getting more and more intense. I put myself in the bath. I put myself in the bath. I put my hypnobirthing meditation music on that I've been listening to for all these months now. And I just continue to just get myself in that mindset because the moment you go in fight or flight, your body, adrenals and cortisol is going to skyrocket and you're actually not going to be dropping into releasing, opening, and dilating pretty much. So I had a job and he had a job. So he finishes all the little housekeeping items. He even does the dishes. Oh my God. And then takes out the trash. Finally, he comes up. I get out of the bathtub. I've been calling my doctor. Uh, she's not answering. I then call my doula. She's not answering. I called my dad. I don't know what he was going to do, but nobody was answering. And so we kept calling my doctor. My husband was looking at me like, do you have another number for the doctor? And I said, no, she, this is the number she gave me and it's the answering service. So then they paid the doctor. Well, we called about 50 times. It was not working. So at that point he called the hospital he tells them the situation and they say, just get here, just bring her here, come. So that's it. We, I changed, uh, before I left the house, I started, um, leaking, um, you know, blood. And this was something I saw in my birth course and my birth prep video that I'd watched. I paid for, I watched, I found her on Instagram, um, very educational, on the stages of labor. And so this was part of my stages of labor. And when I saw that, I said, okay, I know what stage I'm in. That cued me. He's coming and he's coming quick. So I understood that my intensity of my contractions was going to increase another fold and I needed to prepare myself for this. So what was happening was I had a contraction for a full minute and I had about 50 seconds of rest. In that contraction, I couldn't talk to nobody at this point. I just, my husband, I'm sorry, I am not available to answer your question. You need to wait. Hold on. In three, two, okay, all right, I can help you now. What's going on? You know, like that type of in and out. And so we get in the car and I'm thinking to myself, this will be the longest 25 minutes of my life driving to the hospital. How am I going to do this? Like just sitting here, no real place to move or, oh my God. So we put the chair all the way back. My hands are on my back. The whole time I had, I had really intense back labor and I just remember like zoning out in the car. The meditation music was still on, still playing. And I am breathing as far in as I can go and as far out as I can go. And I'm keeping the consistency of this breath with or without a contraction. And so we're driving in silence. I'm focusing. I'm dropping in. I'm pretty much getting into a very deep meditation state, we're crossing over the highway, which is right around the corner from the hospital. And we're seeing the sunrise. My husband sees the sunrise on that day. And he looks at me and he goes, babe, babe, look at the sunrise. And I'm like, huh, huh, huh. oh my gosh, it's so pretty. Okay. Back, back into my zone. And so we get to the hospital. I felt like a drunk person. I couldn't walk. I needed help getting into a wheelchair. They roll me inside. They take me upstairs. Meanwhile, my husband is still in the lobby there. He's getting all the information, you know, who are you name blah, 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 and him have an interaction come to find out he actually knew my doctor because my husband goes, you know, we just couldn't get a hold of our doctor. So now here we are. You know, she's so-and-so's patient. And this doctor goes, wow, I know that doctor. And I actually know your wife. She had come to me as well. So what a small world. My doctor was notified by this other doctor in the hospital at the time we were there. And within 10 minutes, she was there. By the time my husband came up the elevator, she was in there with him. And they both walked in the room at the same time. 
during that time, I was brought up to my room. I, could, I couldn't tell you where I was. I couldn't even tell you what my name was. They asked me, what is your name? I said, my name is Elfran. Okay. Before I have my married last name, Palomino, my name was Frangitas. What is your name? Elfran. Okay. That was the name, Elfran. So um, I asked them to check me, but I did not want to know how dilated I was. So I said, check me, but do not tell me. And that was so key for me because if you're running a marathon, I don't know about you, but I don't want to, I don't want to know how much farther of the marathon I have to run. I just, I would rather not know how much farther I have to go because psychologically it would have just messed me up a little bit and gave in, and just kind of, I don't know, took me off my swivel. So I'd rather not know and think I have that much more to go than you know, put something in my mind. So they checked me and right when they did, my water broke. And right after that, my husband and my doctor walked in and within a couple of minutes, I started in full blown pushing labor. Like this is it. I'm, I'm, I'm pushing now. And a few minutes after that, my doctor says, I see the head. Well, what do you mean you see the head already? And at that point that gave me a marker to then actually push a little more with more intensity, more oomph <laughs> the next time. And so, you know, my hands are actually the entire time on my back. I am continuing to breathe in as far as I can and out as far as I can consistently as I did before. And this is what really helped me have enough energy in me to push have the sustainability to withstand the pain because again, I chose to not have an epidural to do this 100% natural. And so there is nothing happening other than my breath and the support that I have right next to me, which my husband's hand, I wanted it right on my shoulder. I didn't want him to move his hand from my shoulder. And then my doctor was there doing what she was doing, which is amazing. And so next thing you know, um, it took about three to four pushes to get my son's head out. And it, that was what we call the ring of fire. I didn't know in that moment of time, it was extremely intense. And I say that purposefully because this was also the training I did behind switching your the narrative of language you use, all about the hypnobirthing process. So it was very intense in that moment. Three pushes later, his head comes out and then another push goes by with the rest of his body to follow. And at that point, all I can remember is, oh my God, we did it. And all of the pain stopped instantaneously in that moment. So when I was at my house just two hours prior I looked at myself in the mirror and when you're in that low, I don't want to say low state of mind, but you, when you're in a different state of mind than your typical operating system, you don't make the best decisions and your decisions are going to be altered based on how you're feeling. Well, in that state of mind, I looked at myself in the mirror and said, and I want more kids. What was I thinking? Are you like, no, who does like, no. And so the moment my son came out and all that pain just instantly stopped, I thought to myself, wow, it was all temporary. Oh my God, that's it? I'm done? Oh, wow. And I just felt this huge relief of like, oh my gosh, we did it. We got through this. We crossed the finish line. But I'll tell you this much. I did not want to wait for my placenta to come out. I had no no problem them sticking Pitocin in me because I was done. I knew myself. And again, going back to that maternal led experience, I said, no, I'm not waiting. I knew what I wanted. I had my baby. I'm happy with that. I cannot, I don't have the energy for this. I want to enjoy my son. Like I'm done. So they stuck me in the Pitocin. They helped get the rest of um, my placenta out. And at that point, 100 of the pressure was gone once that came out. And my body went into the crazy shakes. I was shaking. I couldn't really enjoy my son, actually. I had my husband take him. With Right after the shakes, he starts calling all of our family and friends. 
puts him on the phone with me. Oh my God, the baby came. How it went? Like 20 minutes ago. Oh my God, what are you doing talking to me? Like, bye. So that was pretty funny. And then we had just all this time together in the hospital. I was happy I did it in the hospital. It was a pretty good experience. It was very fast as well. So I think that had something to do with it as well, with it being a good experience. I don't think I would have liked being there for hours on end, um, you know, waiting for labor to start. When I got there, he came within 45 minutes. Um, so it was really quick and we stayed overnight and the next day we went home and I sit back and I think about what enabled us to initiate his labor. You know, yes, every baby comes in his own timing, but it's also a matter of the mom being ready herself. And my doula had kept reminding me of this. You know, you have to drop into your feminine. The masculine is all about the doing, where the feminine is all about the being, surrendering, just be, which also means do nothing. For all my women out there who are always doing something, try being told for the first time in your life, do nothing. And I remember going back to that day before I meditated in the pool. I completely relaxed and surrendered. My mind was in this like la la land state. I exercised. I climbed the stairs, you know, the stairmaster. Spicy foods do help. And then we watched a show. We were relaxing, cuddling, just all that oxytocin was being flooded into my body. And I really feel that because of that intention to surrender of any day, any, you know, any, anything else for me to do allowed him to say, okay, now you're ready for me. That was so powerful for me. And it still has been throughout my first year of motherhood in remembering to continuously surrender so I can be ready for him. And how much of our life, you know, looking at ourselves as children of our parents, did we want them to surrender their will so that we could show up as our own person and then be ready to receive us? There's nothing for your parent to do other than receive you. But if their will is constantly in front of you, it's not going to give you the room to show up. So I reminded myself of that. And I continuously remind myself, especially on our one year birth anniversary, his first birthday, we woke up that morning together, as I said, and reliving that experience. And, you know, every time we go by our pool and I hear that water trickling down, I'll never forget that moment in time we shared together when he was in my womb. <sighs> it was something I wish every woman to experience in the sense of that type of surrender. We get so afraid of what birth is. Can our body do this? Am I built for this? Can I withstand it? How painful will it be? What will the recovery look like? Will I drop the weight afterwards? You know, and then the breastfeeding, that's a whole nother conversation on now you've just had this baby. Okay. Now you have to, you know, feed him or her and take care and nurture and all these things, which it's all perfect. It's all perfect. And what I will say for you know, all the moms out there that have not enjoyed their labor experience or it was traumatic or, you know, wasn't the way that you wanted or even the way that the people in your life showed up for you or how your spouse, you know, showed up for you. If they didn't show up in the way that you wanted them to, you know, my husband now knows, you know, what he would do different next time. This, although he has three sons now, this was his first time seeing labor, like being a part of that. He wasn't present for his other kids' labor. So for him, it was his first time. And now that he's gone through that, he knows what he would do different next time to support me better. And I myself know what I would do different 
you know, to support myself a little bit better because it was extremely intense, you know, and I still don't know how I got through it other than just trusting, trusting that this is all perfect and I don't have to do anything except breathe, except breathe. The more I breathe, the more I open. And that's what I kept reminding myself of. So, you know, if your experience wasn't what you wanted, it was still perfect. Even if it wasn't what you wanted, it was still perfect because there's something in that experience that you can take away from to recognize where did you not surrender? Where was there resistance? Where was there walls that you met yourself at that you were in your own way actually? And that's still perfect and beautiful because that is your journey. That's where you're at. That's where you get to meet yourself and say, okay, this is where my capacity is. I reached my capacity. Sometimes what we, we can't get to what we want because we're not willing to expand our capacity and support to get there. You have to expand your capacity in order to get to where you want to go. Because if you, if you have already achieved that, then you would know how to get there. But if you have not achieved that, then you don't necessarily know how to get there. So what do you have to put in place to help yourself get there next time? And that's what the most beautiful thing about labor is that when you, you know, if you have more children and you go through the process again, you get to choose differently this time. What do you want different and how would you support yourself? What type of capacity do you need? I was taking all of the supplements, all of the natural remedies. I was eating dates. Oh my gosh, so many dates. I started making date energy bites because I just couldn't eat them raw anymore. I was drinking the red raspberry leaf tea. I was doing so many homeopathic things that really helped me get there. So, you know, tap into your resources. You know, what are the right things you can be fueling your body with, your mindset with? Is it the surrender? Is it tapping into your feminine versus your masculine? What is it that is holding that resistance inside of you? Are you getting caught up in the story of worrying about things that haven't happened yet is ridding you and stealing what is in this moment happening and being grateful for that and dropping into that. The moment you start to worry, you're, you're taking away from this. Okay. It's always one for the other. And so that was also something my doula had shared with me that in the event, your birth plan doesn't go according to plan, which you know, part of it did and part of it didn't. It is still perfect and it is all part of your story. So we have to also not get caught up in this mind of, you know, what we want things to look like, be like, because if it doesn't happen that way, you're going to be so sad and disappointed when it happened exactly how it was supposed to. You know, in actuality, my husband and I didn't want anybody in the room with us. We wanted it just to be us and have this sacred moment just between him and I. And contrary to nobody answering the phones that morning, it ended up just being him and I and the doctor coming in later. So it actually ended up being what we wanted at the end, just didn't happen the way we thought it would. And so it is all perfect. And that is something really hard to come to terms with when things don't happen in our life exactly how we want them to, but yet it's still good because perhaps that in what happened was and is the lessons that you need to learn that you haven't moved past through. So, you know, everything is a mirror of where we're at and what's happening internally. So whatever is happening externally is a true reflection of what's happening internally in the way that you're processing and filtering it. Like, the worst thing could have happened to this person, like the way they processed it was way different than somebody else because of their internal system, right? So really, I'm so grateful that I had a healthy baby at the end of the day, no matter what, that is what's so important is that we have healthy children. You know, I was there for him. We were able to spend that sacred time together and I cannot believe he's already won and you know, my body healed, it took a couple of months to heal. I didn't get back into the swing of things right away. I took my time, 
and allowing myself to just enjoy this moment. I have my whole life ahead of me to get back into what I was doing, my workout, my friends, my life, my whatever. But right now, this is what I'm called to do. And at the same time, I was exhausted waking up all hours of the night, around the clock with the newborn, there's not enough conversation around that. So perhaps if this episode really stood out to you and you want to hear more about the pregnancy, prenatal or postpartum journey, I will be bringing guests on that we can particularly speak about this and really dive into tangible resources and real conversation around these really intimate and sacred moments that not all of us want to come to terms with or really is spoken about to help us get through it more uh, in a supportive manner where we don't feel alone. So going through that process, um, you know, my husband and I don't really have family close by. So it really was just him and I doing it all together. And he was able to take paternity leave during that time. So he was able to be home with me, which I was so grateful for. And, you know, I myself was on maternity leave. And we were just figuring it out. You know, I luckily was able to breastfeed him um, from the get-go. And I didn't have any issues with him latching or me producing milk up until about four months time when my milk dried up. And I was so sad. I did not think I was going to be one of those people that my milk dried up. And I tried everything. The lactation teas, cookies, granola bars. I mean, you name it. Like we were being intimate more often because... You know, you need the oxytocin and the pitocin to develop, and that's what really stimulates and grows more milk ducts. Anywho, um, it all is perfect, but it does continuously, in motherhood, come back to the being aspect of this role. And that is what pregnancy, labor, and now motherhood has been teaching me, is to continuously drop into my feminine, because from that place, everything will flow. And the answers will come to you. And so from the moment that I wanted a maternal led labor, it has, it has shown me that, you know, you, your child chose you to be their mom. Therefore, you know what is best. You know what to do. And even the moments when you don't know what to do, get quiet and ask yourself, what does my child need right now? What do they need? And so many times and my son is now starting to recognize that he can say no and has, you know, you know, emotional outbursts and opinions and, you know, like personal preferences. I look at him and I say, okay, what, what do you need? What do you need? And just that will, like my will is being let go of because I want to know what do you need so I can support you and help you get there? whether it's now or later, you know, depending on what we have going on. But I'm I'm continuously reminding myself to practice that muscle of surrender. I hope that by sharing this story with you, it resonates with you in some way, shape, or form. I hope that it inspires you to tune in at whatever stage of your life you're in. If having children is something in your path that you want one day, just remember that it's all perfect no matter how it happens, no matter how it takes place. And that if you have children already, all they're looking for is to be seen and received. That is it. And thank you so much for creating this space for me. I hope it was helpful for you and gave you exactly what you were looking for. Um, I am super excited now. I have a toddler almost, and I'm looking at all the things that a toddler will, will play with, can be entertained by. And there's so many cool parks here that I've been coming across in my area. Please let me know if you have kids, what it is that you do with them at this age, past one years old, my son is already walking and you know, he's already picking up the phones and like playing telephone. He's taking the broom and like acting like he's cleaning the house. It's so hilarious, actually. He's mimicking all, all the things, all the things that kids do. Tag me, DM me. 
Um, let's create a thread around this. How do we better support our kids? And what are things that you're doing that we can be in the know about? There are no secrets here. So with that, if this really moved you, please share it with a friend you know and love it. I can't tell you how appreciative I am of all your support. That is exactly how I have found majority of my favorite podcasts is by friends sending them to me or I sending them to my friends. And that's how the word goes around. So if you think this can benefit a friend of yours who's pregnant right now, going through labor, trying to have kids, or just had a baby and need some support around this subject, I encourage you, please share with them. It would make their day and mine as well. Thank you so much. And I can't wait to see you here next week. Take care.